Since its premiere, The Idol has gotten a lot of press for being gratuitous, self-indulgent TP. But equally offensive, in my opinion, is how utterly incoherent it is. For various reasons, I feel like the writing process for this show was just like a stream of consciousness that they never went back and edited, cause like, it- you'll see. I originally had a script for this video, but I decided instead to just make it a conversation with me and the two people I watched it with. But I wanted to give some background information and also, we didn't really get into how ridiculous the ending is, so I'll be back for final thoughts. For those who may not know, The Idol started out as a project of Sam Levinson, The Weeknd, and Amy Simons. The show was about a troubled starlet falling victim to a predatory industry figure and fighting to reclaim her own agency, finding herself sexually along the way. Some pictures came out of what the show looked like under Simes' direction, and then a lot of them were scrubbed from the internet. Like, I'm glad that I saved some of them ahead of time. It's wild. I have not... I don't know. But between getting half-finished scripts that were being rewritten every day, a limited budget, and two collaborators who were not quite collaborative, Amy Simons ended up leaving suddenly with the project 80% finished. There wasn't much of an explanation given, but there were reports that The Weeknd said the show was leaning too much into a female perspective, which is a weird thing to say about a show with a female protagonist. But with Levinson now in charge, he scrapped the whole thing to rewrite and reshoot it his way. The infamous Rolling Stone article about this show detailed how under Sam Levinson's direction, they doubled down on physically and sexually violent scenes between Lily Rose Depp and The Weeknd, including some scenes that didn't make the cut. Content warning? A scene where The Weeknd bashes in Lily Rose Depp's face, and then she smiles and asks to be beaten more, which visibly turns him on. And another one where Lily Rose Depp's character goes into a spiral, begging The Weeknd to... R-word her? Can I say that? Because she believes that he's the key to her success. I... <sighs> With that in mind, I'll kick it to our conversation, and I'll be back for some notes. <laughs> we come in swinging right from the get-go, where she's doing the photo shoot, she's showing a little too much yeah. skin. Play fly, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, you're nudity writer. It's very strict. It is my body. I'm not allowed to show my body. We have to change the nudity writer. So okay. there's a guideline, but she wants to break it. I'm this intimacy coordinator. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, what the fuck? I can't believe they have a plot line where the girl is like, I don't want an intimacy coordinator. I felt more in the lines of it being Sam just having Spike because he yeah. probably had that type of no. issue from Oreo. That's 100% what I was, because like the intimacy coordinator is just there to prevent exploitation. They're just there to like enforce boundaries. You realize how fucking annoying and uh, insane that sounds? It's actually very progressive. It's to make sure she doesn't feel pressured. And Sam Lowe's is like, that we know that he's had actors say like hey do i really need to be topless in this scene like do i really need to do that um i was bending over backwards during the first watch trying to be like maybe that's not what this is because it would be crazy if he was so obvious about it it felt very obvious because he had the dude locked in the bathroom <laughs> oh yeah they locked him in the bathroom <laughs> fucking why you gotta lock him in there harass him what a little more nipple because we got rid of the nipple police. It felt like a whole 20 minutes of introducing the producers and the cast and them just talking oh God, nonsense yeah. the whole <laughs> time. That's why we can't remember. That shoot was like 30 was minutes. Stupid. Do you remember that? That shoot was like a whole 30 minute sequence. How long is this? Scene? I know. This is yeah. going on for so, so long. This is almost like parody. And then her photo. Oh my God. God yeah. That was the next scene. Someone <laughs> came on her face and then took a photo. What, this is a plot line? That Which was, didn't make any sense. It didn't like add to anything because she was already exposing herself. That's so true. She already wanted- And they already had like a whole like bit about the whole exposing the body. You can't expose your body. It should have happened right before all of this happened with the health advisor and all that. That like, would actually make the, sense. That should have been the first thing that was And exposed, then this is her like taking back the consent. This is her, like, oh my being, God. like, I consent yeah. to this. This is my choice. Oh my God, we're script doctoring the <laughs> idol here. I bet, because they rewrote the whole script, I bet that's how it was originally. Yeah. I bet that picture leaked and it was like, oh no, her squeaky clean image is ruined. Okay, we should just lean into it. And then that's when she gets the like bad girl thing. But instead we have her fighting to show her nipple and then being like, oh, not a picture of my face. I hated the dialogue in this show. I, I did not enjoy it. When Jocelyn and Leia are talking and she's like, what's wrong with him? He's so rapey. 
Yeah, I kind of like that about him. <laughs> I hated that line. I was like, <laughs> men writing women. <laughs> also introduced Jenny Kim. Uh, oh, yeah, she'll <laughs> t blink and you'll miss her. I mean, her dance scene was memorable. Like it, bank it, drop it, ah! I'll just watch Jenny dancing. More of that. The second half of it, of episode one, I think that's the introduction oh, yeah, they go to, to Tetros. The, Tetros. Yeah. Because in the nightclub, he's just like, yeah, guys, it's me. Hey, that's Jocelyn Jocelyn over there. Is that Jocelyn? Hold on. Is that Jocelyn on my, on my dance floor? They go to Tetros' club, and then they start smashing on the stairs. The weekend does not try to cover up his Canadian accent at all He'd be like jocelyn <laughs> jocelyn <laughs> he's her waist man like how they be talking like that you naturally prefer companionship but i guess there's a lot worse things than playing a little one-man couch hockey in the dark wait yeah. a second no 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 was that episode oh two? no 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 what was the glass at the, at the end of episode one he i wrote he like fondles her with a glass one? of ice that's right And he's like, I'm going to make the super sexy remix version of this. I'm going to recreate that because I think if I include the actual one in this video, it's going to get copyright striked, which means that I just have to get some sort of electro pop thing and then just well, put moaning sounds moon. over it. Awesome. Awesome. You got to do the moans of your own. Oh, you, you want to do the moans? In my room you gotta do, dude, mic. you got to do the moans. <laughs> have you heard see the loud nigra? It's a, it's a famous <laughs> audio sourced from a video of a man... Uh, finishing so powerfully i didn't know that was this context yeah i'll just do that it's hard to have find anything to say about the first three episodes because nothing happens the first sex scene was so offensive where she's like naked and writhing around and he's literally fully clothed sitting in a chair it's like a dating sim anime when the girl like, gets fully naked but the dude has his pants on it's like a caricature of that trope of like <laughs> oh we're not gonna put the guy in any sort of a vulnerable we can't, we, position we can't put the weekend expose the weekend not that i want to yeah. see yeah. weekend cheeks I, but we should have seen weekend cheeks Cheeks. Not that I needed that. <laughs> I, I I'm not, I I'm not been saying we my... needed that <laughs> by any was, means. You know what was a touching scene? The scene in the of the music video shoot of her mentally falling apart. That was that a, was a yeah. That was the only scene that had a meaningful moment to me of her just trying it, and then her going outside, and then that girl giving her the motivational speech. We love Destiny though. Destiny's a great character. This is perfectionism getting in the way of actually completing content and. Um, this, yeah, this I don't. This, this I don't get to. <laughs> that felt like it was a different show in itself. What I forgot about that scene is that intercut with it is Hedros uh, making Cisco thrust oh, while yeah. he shocks him. Oh, that's something. right! Lower thrust. Lower Isaac. Uh, now look at Sophie. Fucking lower. He's like again. Again! He's again. I hate his voice. The weekend and Drake have the worst talking voices. We hit a fuck. We hit a fuck. Did you see that video of Drake on the live stream and his card gets declined and he's like, embarrassing. Drake says it's just like that. No. He's like, embarrassing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> Euphoria at least had a plot that like was carrying. <laughs> was had a plot. On. The idol makes Euphoria look like Citizen Kane. After that, everybody's like, I don't know if we should like go on with this because she's broken. If she really is as big as a pop star as this universe set it up to be, her going away for like a year would not hinder her career. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. If she's like, because they're making her like on the level of Taylor Swift. Like she came back and she yeah. filled up this whole stadium. She is simultaneously like the biggest pop star in the world where she's got all this pressure on her, but also completely broke. <laughs> and they're like, we're out of money. How are you both? Was episode one with the one girl interviewing Jocelyn on the... Yeah, which I forgot about until just now. Because I was like, how did that come in? And then I'm like, oh yeah, she just existed so that you know in the first... It's like, if you show a journalist in the first episode, she must publish <laughs> an article by the fifth episode. Oh, that was the other thing that I haven't read about, but I'm curious about, is that a lot of people say that this is the weekend subtweeting Selena Gomez. Whoa. I don't... This this show is just evolving into so much controversies and messed up stuff. 
It goes back to like how we had the whole intimacy coordinator thing that was clearly just veiled Sam Levinson resentment for intimacy coordinators. I guess Selena Gomez had to cancel her tour because she had a mental breakdown oh. when she was diagnosed with lupus. We came to you and we said we should cancel that tour and you said no. And then a week before you're going to play Madison Square Garden, I get a call that you are out of your fucking mind. Oh, oh my gosh. And then she did a photo shoot where she had just gotten out of the hospital and they suggested that she keep her hospital bracelet on. Oh! The robe. Mm -hmm. The hospital wristband. I mean, are, are we romanticizing mental illness? Absolutely. That was in the thing! That was in the oh, thing! The weekend you oh my it. gosh! <laughs> he is a creep! He's a lame! What a low freak! Any, like, swagger that he had, it was swept under the rug after watching that. We three. can skip through episode yeah. three real quick that they have a cute little montage in Valentino of Lily Rose Depp trying on cute clothes. Just kidding, they fuck really loudly. <laughs> I'm gonna come. No! That was the iconic scene with the black dude, and the guy was like, What are you looking at my girl for? What are you looking at my foot for? Sorry, I'm not. I'll catch you looking at Rodeo. I'll fucking drag you down Rodeo. I'll fucking curb stomp you. And then he pours some maple syrup on his head. <laughs> You're, like, hey, you're a waste man, you hoser. <laughs> now we have a meeting with this. And then we have a meeting with our makeup line that we have together. And, and he's like, cancel it. Oh, you could cancel that. Cancel that. Cancel that. Cancel it. So cancel it. He's like, that's good for you, not for Jocelyn. I was thinking about it. That's, first of all, not even true. If she's as broke as they say she is, like, <laughs> she needs every source of income she can get. But also, like, they bring this up later when Troy is like, she's using you. And it's like, he is actively like firing her employees <laughs> like messing with her business and oh, he's clearly in that's control right. here there was like the dietitian was like all right you know let's see the diet and he's like don't touch her <laughs> don't you touch her you get the whole <laughs> curve stop you you mind not groping my girl it's okay i don't know if this is the right fit anymore in persona 3 right was the first time that his entourage goes to the house and they are just like immediately just getting naked just allowing I would not to... want people. I would. You just gonna oh. jump in my pool? Okay. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> ah. Jump scare. Leave my house. Which is double weird when Chloe is revealed to be seventeen. Oh yeah. Yes. And the first thing that she does is get naked. Oh my Sam God. Levinson, be... to his credit, but I don't actually think this is to his credit. Dated someone that was like, I don't know, like twenty years older than him. That's still weird. This. <laughs> she was like a cutesy kind of baby face blonde woman. Mm -mm. And that makes me very suspicious of him. <laughs> that he dated an older woman that had like a round face and was blonde. And then he started making all these shows about young, round faced blonde girls getting that battered. That is true. I'm like, it's almost like... like he's expounding on his weird interests. Thank you for taking care of me. Because that was what I was writing. It was the conversation they have at dinner is incoherent. Them using that picture of her as the album cover. And they're simultaneously being like, you're a sex icon. And also so many little girls look up to you. But it, it just doesn't matter because it's not commercial. Like you can't do that. Stores won't show your album if that's your cover and it's so annoying because it feels like no one like characters or writers on this show understands the absolute basics because <laughs> nothing actually mattered in this show it was just a vehicle to get to... lily rose depp like battered and naked yeah this is uh this is a film we just do it as a write-off and stuff just to give people naked and stuff there are jokes about that with like B-movies where someone is the writer, director, star, and it's like some <laughs> fuddy-duddy old man, but then the love interest is some yeah. like hot woman, <laughs> and it's so clear that this is all just an excuse for him to like get to grab her. Hi, this is Mandy. Hi, Mandy. I just called to say hi. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, you know what it is. It. Because you're thinking about it, too. Just so you're clear, Josh, the, the guy who wrote and directed this also stars in it. it, 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 it so. Yeah. You're right. And he filmed the scenes. He filmed these scenes. There's something we glossed over in the dinner scene, and that's that this is when Tedros gets Jocelyn to admit that her mom used to beat her. Her favorite was probably hitting me with a hairbrush. Does Sam Livingston only write very damaged women that are being controlled by a man? And then Destiny does some digging on Tedros, finds out that his real name is Mauricio, among other things about him. This motherfucker kidnapped his ex-girlfriend. Oh. 
held her hostage for three days, and beat the living shit out of her. Oh, come I'm on. talking about torture, crazy wild you shit. fucking torture? Tortured her. There is a 400-page trial transcript with details that will raise the hair off of your motherfucking neck. And to make matters worse, while he was in trial, he got hit with a slew of other charges. So he's canonically like a serial abuser and a pimp and a cult leader. So just like, keep that in mind. We'll come back to it. You still got that hairbrush? Yeah. Go get it. Okay. So episode three ends with the, the hairbrush beating. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait a second. What was the scene where, like, Jocelyn is singing with the the studio guy? Oh, my God. Are we talking about an episode four where he okay, pulls wait. up her dress? <laughs> oh, yeah. And is, like, feeling her in front of everyone. And she's just, like, screaming into the... Because I was writing... Wait. Yeah, that's the, that's the scene. The fact that she's recording a song is, like, secondary to the sex that they're having. Like, that is Publicly. a sex scene where she just happens to also be in front of a microphone. <laughs> Oh my god! Look at that grin. I was not thinking about that. I tried to erase that from my head. But then, have we talked about Troy getting shocked yet? Okay, so again, we kind of glossed over this. There's like a three-minute scene of just shocking Troy Sivan with a shock collar. I was a huge fan of Troy Sivan when I was like 10, 11, 12-ish. Who makes you laugh? Troy Sivan. Who makes you laugh? Troy Sivan. I've literally been Troy trash since like, what is this, 2013? 2012? One of those two. It starts with like Tedros and Xander having a little pitch perfect moment where he finds them singing in the shower and he's like, you've got such a great voice. Why don't you sing? You should really use the gift that God gave you. You ask Jocelyn how she feels about that. So the implication that Jocelyn played a role in Xander's lack of a singing career lands him in a shock collar. Stop, Stop fighting. fighting. Fucking so we get this really long sequence of Jocelyn being like, he's lying, shock him. And Xander getting shocked. Shocked him again. <laughs> so then amid getting shocked, Xander is like, she fucking controls everything around her and everyone. And now she's doing it to you. You. It's, it's out of focus, but I can still see the nips. And it's like, what? Like, we are given reason to believe that Jocelyn messed with Xander's life, but up to this point, Tedros has fired Jocelyn's employees, cut off businesses she was working with, canceled her meetings, filled her house with his people, publicly abused her. It, like, like what? So now Xander is like kind of on Tedros' side, but also kind of riding Jocelyn's like coattails, I guess at Tedros' behest, but he's also like doing his dirty work. Like he frames this guy for rape and it's really weird. We'll come back to that too. There's so much that happened that had no impact on the plot. And then this is when uh, Jenny comes and apologizes for taking her song. I just signed for the magistrate and she wants me to have World Class Center as my first single. Oh, wow. Which I don't understand well, how that scene worked because if that was her moment of understanding that The weekend was playing her, but then in the end he she was playing him all along, I don't understand right. how, how, right, how that yeah. worked out. Because the moment of understanding there was that The weekend had Jenny bring her in the first place, which I was saying like, as someone who, I don't know if I mentioned this, had a similar situation where I once met someone at a party who I later found out had had his friend invite me there, but like didn't admit that he knew who I was and he was like you look so familiar he literally goes you look so familiar do you have a YouTube channel <laughs> oh man and he's like, that oh, made no. me like see it's so lame but I didn't I didn't turn into a master manipulator <laughs> after that which is what seems to happen with Jocelyn this would be like mm. if that happened to you and then you found out that it was all set up and then you were like actually I was the mastermind behind all of this like actually like, <laughs> I did know <laughs> yeah like that was, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point because she did really didn't know. And then it's as though it's that when she found out that Tetris was a lame, that's when she was like, I'm the master manipulator now. I am in control. Jocelyn finds out that Diane was put up to invite her to the club in the first place. And that's why she invites her ex over to sleep with him again. And I was talking to someone for that entire scene. Dude, this is the most graphic it has ever been. This is too much. Immediately upon the ex showing up, Tedros is a fucking mess. He was a coke addict. Oh my already. god! But then by episode four, he was like, he was. He's sweating. like sweaty and crying. And it only took a night. 
for him to lose control of drugs. (laughs) It was within that night where he's pounding shots, like so many shots in a row. Oh, yeah. So after the whole deal with like shocking Xander, Isaac Cisco is like, okay, you need to do something for Tedros now. And that thing is very unelaborately framed Jocelyn's ex for rape. I met this girl really briefly at the bottom of the fucking steps when Xander asked me to take a fucking photo. Now she's going to press saying I raped her and she has witnesses. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense that like, this is clearly a guy that Jocelyn doesn't really care about. But then when she finds out amid a 23 minute scene where she and her friends are like giving lap dances to her team to like convince them to greenlight her tour. Amid that, she finds out that her ex has been framed for rape and she figures out that Tedros did it. And I guess that's the final straw where she's like, get the hell out of my house. Get out. I'm not leaving. Then I'll call the cops. Then I'll keep you hostage. Then they'll fucking kill you. Not before I fucking kill you first, bitch. Pay him whatever the fuck he wants to get out of my life forever. Send them off. But Tedros won't take money to leave. He just like tears up the check. So then they have Chekhov's Vanity Fair columnist publish a hit piece on him, which is explained with some very um, concise and subtle exposition. And most importantly, that psychopath is out of our oh, lives. Yeah, oh, yeah. Got rid of my him. God, that <laughs> fucking gone. You know who God. fucking did it? You fucking sniper right. Talia that that's right fucking Vanity Fair Talia article is yeah. hot Talk his ass I out. love her Dude, the quotes that's right from the hookers he used She's to pimp out yeah so this Vanity Fair article ruins Tedros' image he loses his club he's getting hit by the IRS but it's like why would Vanity Fair care unless Chaim posed this to them as like this guy was exploiting Jocelyn in the context of the show, he's he's a nobody, which makes me think this is another one of those vestigial things from the original script, because in the original script, I think he's supposed to be like a big name record producer. But in this, he's just some dude. So it's like, why is Vanity Fair publishing an article on some dude? But it doesn't matter that it doesn't make any sense. They don't need to fix it because their goal wasn't to write a coherent show. It's just to hit some beats, pun intended, I guess. So whatever. Tedros has skyrocketed from a no-name club promoter to a Vanity Fair featured pimp and abuser. But then six weeks later, Jocelyn is on tour and Tedros goes to the venue to see if she's left him an artist pass and she did. You have a great night, Mr. Jackson. So he meets up with her in her dressing room and they're inexplicably in love again. And then he sees the brush that her mom beat her with. Did you say this was the brush your mom beat you with? I did. It's brand new. So I guess she faked it. She lied about being abused. But to what end? Because he did beat her in the show? She was screaming and crying. Was this all part of an elaborate ruse? And again, like, to what end? And then she goes on stage and introduces Tedros as the love of her life? I have the opportunity to introduce you to the love of my life. And then she says, You're mine. Forever. Now go stand over there. And it's like, what? She was doing all this to absorb his talent. Because she took his people, yeah. Like, The weekend has a talent of bringing the best out of people musically. I think what it was is that he brought the best out of her, and that's when she exploited him. Yeah. But wouldn't the way of doing that be that she lets him bring out the best and then she kicks him to the curb? Then she, then the love of my life. That would make more sense than the love of my life, who (laughs) we just had a hit piece published on. So she's ruining her own image. It's like Taylor Swift comes out and she's like, hey, I'm dating... Charles Manson. He's the love of my life. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like, what? I'm dating the Weinstein. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, and why? then she whispers why? into like Harvey Weinstein's ear. She's like, you belong to me now. Like, no, you've just <laughs> ruined your own image. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm getting exasperated just talking about this. Like, I know, I, I'm like, like I watching it, watch it all over again, just reliving it. Yeah. <laughs> so it, well, the moral of the story was she was manipulative all along. And women be trifling. <laughs> It, That's it just, the moral. Everybody's a, a victim, except for Jocelyn. What we realized at the end is that Tedros was her muse and that she got what she needed out of him. What? He was her muse? 
she got her like opening act, I guess. She got some of his cult people. I think a lot of the audience will, will watch maybe the first few episodes and think that this guy is taking advantage of her. By the end, he realizes that she knows exactly what he's doing and she knows exactly what she's doing. But she didn't. She didn't know exactly what he was. What was he doing? They just had a lot of sex. What? 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 Why was he canceling her meetings and firing her staff and beating her with a brush in front of her friends? What? What was the goal? She needs to devour those around her to feel like she's got something to say. This pimp from the Midwest who shows up in Beverly Hills ends up being the victim. How is he the victim? How is he the victim? Because he got kicked out? Literally, what was he a victim of? He is canonically a serial abuser, a pimp. He manipulates and sexualizes everyone around him, including minors. He tortures people. He threatened to kill Jocelyn. And then she finds out that he manipulated her. And then she shuts him out for like a few weeks. Is it the Vanity Fair article? Is that what he's a victim of? Because one, that was just a list of things that he did do. It wasn't like this like premeditated slanderous hit piece. The manager had it published because he wouldn't leave her house. The more I think about it, all she did was like maybe lie about being abused. But he was actively abusing her and messing with her career. And then she kicked him out of her house and somehow he's the victim now between like watching and editing this it's increasingly clear to me that this show was just a vehicle to get out a lot of pent-up anger but like i don't know journal about it like i like go to therapy they'll literally make a fucking mini series instead of going to therapy like this is not the place to do this it's so weird i can see i can see the bones of what this show once was i can imagine the context of things that don't make any sense in this show but that would have made sense in a different version of this show i need to see that original cut from the original director man i want to see that yeah we were robbed I finally understand release the Snyder cut. Release the Simets cut. Release the Simets cut. Okay, bye.